Hey friends, so this is the final video in the Operator series, and now we're going to expand Operator. We're going to take Operator in all kinds of awesome places by using um, Ableton native devices to create sounds that are more unique to you. Um, this video is going to cover how Ableton Live in and of itself is a modular synthesizer. Basically, all the things that you see in Ableton, all the devices, instrument racks, audio effect racks, all of this stuff is basically modular connectivity for different aspects of the sound that you're trying to create. So what I'm going to show you now is the, the first method that I want to show you is, is building an effect chain. Okay, what this is right here, you might be wondering, well, that looks that looks a little weird or strange. But this is this is actually an effect chain. So this is the sound before it. And here's the sound after it. <laughs> That's awesome. So so as you can see, we've gone from a sound that potentially you've kind of heard before this to something that is just wild and wide and moving and evolving. What this is, is this is an, is an effect rack, okay? All of these little guys in here, these are collapsed effects, okay? So I dragged an auto filter in, I dragged a multiband dynamics in, I dragged in, let's see, what else did I do? A vinyl distortion, which, which I absolutely love, a vocoder, absolutely love it. Um, a utility to get the gain back where I wanted. There's a reverb in there. Interesting. We've got an EQ, and we've got a glue compressor and a saturator. Okay. So let's go ahead, and I'm just going to switch these off, and we're going to go over kind of the methodology for building an effect rack to go after operator to expand its sound palette and take it in extreme and fun ways. Okay. So this is the effect rack, right? What I can do is I can just ungroup this, and now just all the effects are just kind of living after, they're all turned off and they're living after operator. If I click on a bar, this is a nice shortcut, if I click on the bar of the first one and scroll all the way to the end, hold shift, click on the last one, they select, all of them are selected now. And so then what I can do is I can right click, and I can hit group, and it will create an effect rack with all of those effects in it, right? And I can collapse it by hitting this. This is the Show Hide Devices tab. I can collapse it, right? But the way I actually had it running was, these are the macro controls that you can map, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But what I did is I just double-clicked the title bar, and it shrinks each one of these. See that? So it's kind of like an out-of-sight, out-of-mind kind of thing. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn these on one by one, and we're going to talk about why I did them. All right, so the first thing... <laughs> So the first thing I did is I had an auto filter on, right? This is pretty self-explanatory. First of all, I felt like the, the top end that, that operator was making wasn't controlled enough. I also have a little bit of envelope. So this is... What it does is it just moves just a little bit. It's just yo, yo, yo. Just a little bit of moving in that filter. Um, and I have that envelope turned on there. So that's that first thing. The second thing I did, multiband dynamics. And, you know, we're going to dive pretty, pretty deeply into this because this is a huge... It changes a lot of your sound because what it's doing is it's it's compressing but it also can can do com compression in two different directions upward and downward and doing that can really help you shape your music and especially after you've done that kind of messing around with these uh the split points but um i'm not going to break this down right now but i'm just going to kind of show you what i did essentially I, I needed to compress some of the low end as you can see the low end is just huge so with with this off it sounds like a lot of like kind of like thuddy muddy uh, low end there. I'm gonna turn this on. Just listen to the difference. So we'll get more into that here in a bit. I'm gonna shrink that down. Now this is one of my favorites. Vinyl distortion is just an incredible effect. Okay, so check this out. We've taken basically a completely mono signal and now we've just made it super wide. Isn't that nice? 
just done with this little mono to stereo switch, you can you can really add some 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 width to what you're working on just by adding that, okay? That's what that was. Now the vocoder, this is huge. We're gonna dive deep into this guy. This is what it sounds like without it. And here's with it. Now it gets quieter, so I added a utility. So let's actually do it this way. This is before. And this is after. Do you see where I, I was able to emphasize some of those uh, top frequencies? And there's a little kind of sound that's in there too that's really fun. Um, I was able to use vocoder to do that, okay? So here's the reverb without it. Just adds a little bit of sense of depth. Then we've got an EQ8. And listen to the difference before this and after this. So. Hear that rat? This EQ kind of addresses that. Now we got... Whenever those treble areas get uh, peak out, this kind of grabs those and, and keeps them from getting too loud, right? So this is kind of another tone shaping. And yes, it does make it a little bit quieter, so you can always add some gain here. But what I did is I put a glue compressor at the end of it, all right? So here's without the glue compressor. Here's with it. And what the glue compressor is doing is it's just kind of like evening out the sound. Notice I have it on limiter mode, okay? This is kind of some of the process I want to talk about. This is an extreme setting. Why would I put this in a track? Well, that's okay. A lot of these settings need to be extreme in order to get... We're, we're trying to take Ableton and flex it as hard as we can and move it and just try to get... We're exploring sound. You know, in sound design, you don't need to worry about... Just forget what you've learned, okay? What matters now is experimenting and taking Ableton to its limits and trying to find that new sound, whatever that new sound is. So in this case, I have this glue compressor really just ducking the sound when it gets loud. But watch that little, look at the gain reduction. We're going between zero and 10. Zero and 10, how, how incredibly far that is. It's just, it's just nuts, right? So this is helping us level out this bass sound because really when, when we're making bass, we can't afford to have uh, the, the signal moving from zero. We can't have a full 10 decibels of dynamic range. We don't want that. So what the glue compressor is doing, is it's, it's also fusing all of these wacky sounds that we've made with all these effects into something usable, right? Okay, and then finally, talking, speaking of, of gluing, quote-unquote, or putting the, the sounds together, we also have the saturator, which is kind of helping us just homogenize the sound into a, an even more um, cohesive, together kind of, kind of thing, right? So check this out before it... In fact, I feel like we could go a little bit harder with it. I'm going to turn the output down, the drive up a little bit. Now listen to that. What, what's awesome is that when the signal underneath of the of the drive is playing, there's there's not that much saturation. Then once it passes that line, you get a little bit more teeth. So now we have a lot more movement going on. So I'm, you know, this is an extreme distortion setting, right? But the cool thing about it is that the sound is kind of moving in and out of that uh, distortion phase. Watch it. See. Now, obviously, when I play this bass sound lower, because I was making this for low bass, uh, it's a little bit more controlled and it's not as extreme. So, like, especially in... Oh, it's just so nice. Okay. So, all right. So, I know I didn't, like, really break too much down, but that's kind of the point. What I wanted to show you is the incredible difference you can make just by using an effect chain and, and some of these techniques. What we're going to do at the end of this lesson is make a voice from operator from scratch and then build an effect chain around it. But that's at the end, okay? Because what I wanna to get to is a lot of these other methods, okay? And uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the second one. So, uh, you know, a, a complaint that I hear with operator is, it doesn't have unison detune like Serum, man. Like, I, you know, I can't add all these extra large wide detune voices. Well, Ableton is designed so that you can do literally anything that you can think of, but there are certain ways to do that. And and these these controls have more accuracy and more options, okay? So in this case, I have, let's just listen to this single operator. So this is, you know, as wide of a patch as I can make, uh, kind of a hyper saw. So each one of these oscillators is running a saw waveform and they're slightly detuned and you get...
right? Sounds pretty good, okay? But it's not huge sounding. Like, and 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 if I was making this in Serum or Omnisphere or anything, I would turn on the Unison Detune, right? But instead, what I've done is I've actually just copied this operator into these other slots, okay? And I've made this sound. It now sounds like this. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to do this from scratch, okay? This is taking operator, and we're what we're doing is we're doing a quote-unquote unison detune by just making a voice in operator and, and expanding it, okay? So let's just go ahead and do this from scratch. So we've got... Oscillator 1 is going to be, I'm going to kind of fly through this, all right? So Oscillator 1 is a saw D, right? And we're going to add just a little bit of release, a little bit of attack. Okay, so what I, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down, and I need to compensate with volume because each one of these oscillators is going to be the same, all right? I'm clicking on the second one, right click, copy from oscillator A, copy from oscillator A, and copy from oscillator A, right? So now I have a bunch of <laughs> saw waveforms that are all sta stepping on each other's toes. So the next thing I need to do is unphase each one of them, right? We're trying to mock a big analog synthesizer, right? So now you can hear the phases moving, right? Because I've, I've un-re-triggered each one of the phases, okay? And now the next thing I want to do is I want to just detune some of them. So I'm going to turn the course down on this oscillator and go all the way up. And this one's just going to be a little bit less. And now we get a bigger. And just to get as much as we can out of this, I'm going to turn the spread up. And if, if I didn't explain this before, what spread does is it creates two different sets of this operator of these operator voices and detunes one versus the other. So you get this is without it, this is with it, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on the top bar. Now this this is this is where the methodology comes in. Right click on the top bar, get a group. Okay. When you group something, all you see is these brackets kind of form on the outside. What we need to do is we need to look at the show hide chain list, okay? So what this is, is this is showing you all the different chains. A chain could be considered, so let's let's just say I have an auto filter and who knows whatever else. That is a, that is a chain of effects, okay? So there's an instrument and then some effects, right? What I can do is I can go back in here and I can say, all right, create chain, okay? And now this is a whole nother chain of, let's say we have just some random effects in here. This is a whole nother chain of instruments and effects, all right? So I don't want that. What I actually want to do is I want to, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to get rid of this auto filter too, because I just don't need that. It's just the operator I'm looking at now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this operator and I'm going to right click on it and hit duplicate. So now I just made a second copy of that first operator, right? I'm going to do it again. Okay. So now I'm going to look at each one of these operators, right? And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to change some settings. Like, what I've done now is I've made three operator voices that I can just stack on each other, and I'm going to have to turn this down because this is going to be loud, but... But hear how phasey that is? What I actually need to do is I need to go into each one of these, and I need to change the tunings a little bit. So I'm going to make them a little more extreme in the second one. So this one's going to go up to 20, 75. Now we've got... In fact, I'm even... The, the, the original, I'm going to do that too. There we go. Now we're starting to get some wider sounds. So here's without it. Here's with it. I actually could turn this up a little bit. So without it, with it. So it's starting to get wider. Now this third copy, I'm going to make this even crazier. I'm going to really just go go for it in terms of detuning because I really want that detuned sound, right? Um, let's go ahead and make this. Uh, yeah, let's go that way with it. Woo! Now that's huge. Huge sounding operator. You know, and I could just keep doing this. I could keep duplicating this, and then with each one, I could progressively get farther away from the fundamental. Now we've got, like, we're like access virus level. Right? Now we've got a lot of that top end kind of gargly sound. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put an auto filter at the end of the K. Okay? And what I'm going to do with this auto filter is I'm actually going to use the envelope section of it. So if I turn the envelope up, it's going to, when it hears signal, it's going to react to that envelope, right? Here you go. If I turn the attack down, it's instant. But what I want to do is maybe open the release just a little bit so I can get... And what you're noticing is that it's sustaining the whole time because the all the envelope on here can do is react to the incoming signal. So we're going to, I'm going to show you another trick when you're building these instrument racks. Let's say I want to have a, a different 
way that this envelope reacts to this. So what I can do is I can actually create a new chain. I'm going to drop an operator into here. Okay, this is just another operator. And I'm going to make this first section. I'm just going to make it, I'm going to solo it out so we can listen to it. It's kind of just this, this sound, but I want to make it a little bit more resonant. So, or sorry, a little bit uh, brighter. Okay, so that's this sound. Now, why would I make this sound? Well, what I want to do is I want to open the side chain of this filter, this little button right here, and I'm going to side chain this from the exact same, see uh, this is two instrument rack, two instrument rack, this is the, this is the track that I'm on. I'm going to side chain this, and, and here's the thing, when you have effects after instrument racks, you have all these side chain options. Look at all of this, every single one of those operators, okay? So this final operator here, if I just click on this, it doesn't matter which one I click because there's no effects like messing with it. If I just click on uh, pre-effects, this, this, the send. Now watch coming into this filter what it looks like. You can hear it clunk, clunk. Okay, so what I can now do is I can hit this little chain activator. So these speakers, this is how you turn voices on and off. You could think of these as like uh, synthesizer voices and I can turn them on and off. So when I turn this off, the cool thing is that it's still triggering the auto filter. See, now we can hear that release. I'm going to turn up the, the resonance so we can really tell. Isn't that cool? So if I turn the release up, I get... So now we've got a really huge kind of like, if you're going for that analog, you know, uh, vintage analog, like polysynth kind of sound, this is... You've got the, the hypersaw kind of thing going. It's just, it sounds huge. And the way that I did this is I'm just triggering the side chain here on this auto filter from a, a track that we can't even hear, right? So that's using instrument rack to add a bunch of voices of operator, okay? So operator is not limited to four oscillators. I mean, how many oscillators we got going now? now we've got 16 oscillators. Actually, we've got, if we wanted to really, uh, to be accurate, we've actually got you know, 20 oscillators running right now, and we could just keep going. This doesn't take that much CPU. And as a side note, Ableton's native devices are optimized to get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of CPU. So the more you can learn how to use these devices, the better off you're gonna be in the future, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next track. This, I'm, I'm actually gonna save this voice. I love this voice. I, I'm just so stoked about the sound I made. Check it out. It's like a weird, like old, like vintage piano kind of synth voice. Now, you you might be wondering what's going on. You can see operators just freaking out. What 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 is happening here? Here's the rad thing. Um, if you have Ableton Suite, you also get LFO. And LFO is, is an incredible way to expand operator. What I've got going on here is I've got, you know, LFO is, is affecting all kinds of parameters. We've got, you know, even the LFO amount in Ableton is being affected by an LFO. LFO and LFO, LFO inception is going on, right? We've got filter and resonant frequency. You know, all of these changes that are happening over time. Let's go ahead and look at the LFO as I play. <laughs> Okay, so isn't that amazing? All right, so I've got all these LFOs. Let's go ahead and build a voice from scratch using LFO, okay? So I'm just going to grab an operator. I'm going to make a just some quick edits here. Okay, I'm going to turn down the volume to compensate. All right, so I've got a little voice here. Maybe I'll... Yeah, I wanted to get, I just wanted to get a little bit more uh, high end in there. Okay. Okay, so now I've got this voice and here's this LFO. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start mapping the LFO. To, so this is the same thing that you would do when you're MIDI mapping. Okay, when you hit the MIDI map thing. When I hit this map button, see this flashing? This is now flashing. That means it's ready to be mapped to a control. So if I just... Let's map it to the coarse frequency of oscillator, or not the coarse, but the uh, level of, os of oscillator 2, okay? So what's happening now is that this thing is turned all the way up to 100, okay? This is going from the lowest possible setting. What it's going to do, what LFO is going to do, is it's going to take the control completely over, okay? So 
if the depth knob, for example, if depth is all the way up, then you get... But when I turn depth down, check it out. You might think of that as maybe a more useful way of using this. But let's say I don't want it to get as high as it's getting, okay? But I want it to have that much range. What I can do is then offset it. So watch what happens to this graphic when I offset this. Do you see it kind of move down? Now we've got some of the lower frequencies, and then obviously the other way. This is a huge thing in modular synthesis. This is uh, how to offset and attenuate um, a control, okay? Just as a side note. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn the depth to about 55%. Okay, and here's the rad thing. So you're like, all right, well, great. So I'll just get another LFO. You actually don't have to do that. If you like this curve, and this is a useful curve, you can actually apply this to multiple mappings at once. Check this out. Boom. Oh my God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different mapping locations for each LFO. Imagine the power. <laughs> so I'm going to map this now to the tone control. Remember, this is kind of like our FM index. So check this out. Now, because these controllers are moving the same way, you might be asking, okay, well, what is this stuff? Well, this is actually a way that you can tell the LFO what to do. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the minimum and decrease the maximum. So I've got, now I've got, check this out. They're, 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 they're going opposite directions as each other, right? So now we've got, check that out. How rad is that? Now we've got the moving cool kind of sound. Right? That's kind of fun. So now we've, now you can see, you can go ahead and, you know, just map this all over the place, right? So let's just grab another LFO and we're going to, we're going to look at some of the other things that LFO does. So here's a second LFO. I already really like this sound. In fact, I'm going to kind of... I'm going to get just a little bit more top end out of this by increasing some of these. I'm actually going to slow this LFO down. So that's obviously the rate control. So it's kind of just evolving and moving slowly. So another thing that you can do with with LFO is there are all these different shapes. These are where all the shapes are. So let's choose random. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a stepped random kind of situation going on, right? So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to map this to something else. And, and you know, let's, let's just go ahead and listen to it. So this is the volume of oscillator C, okay? And we've got the depth all the way up, right? So what I want to do is I want to do a really complex kind of LFO with this. I want this to kind of move around in, in, in a wild way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the rate. Check this out. Now it's just blah, blah, blah. Check it out. Now, if we had a beat going and we synced this LFO, it could be really fun to have like a really, you know, kind of like a rhythmic thing going on. But that's not what we're doing. We're just, it doesn't matter what the speed of this is at this point, okay? I just want this. Now, the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you smoothing. So what smoothing will do is this, it will, so these are really extreme changes. If I turn this up, this is going to kind of, it's called slewing. This is going to slew. It's going to take these signals and it's going to, it's going to kind of blend them all together, right? Now, if I just turn the rate back down. And I turn the depth down a little bit so it's not so wildly moving. I'm going to get this nice. Do you see what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, this is part of, this, this should be part of sound design. It is 2019. It's time to start embracing the incredible amount of control that you can have over sounds by doing these kinds of like actions. This is what's known as adding movement. We're adding movement to the, the sound that we're creating, right? So, you know, another thing that we can do is we can take this very same kind of, you could almost think of this as like a drunk LFO and map it to multiple places. So maybe what we'll do is we'll map this now to the the filter frequency, right? So now we've got...
And in this case, I'm probably going to want to do an inverse relationship again. So this is zero and that's a hundred. So these inverse relationships are how you can get a lot of action. And now we've lost some of the top end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the shaper, of course, and give it a little drive, compensate with volume. Actually, let's use the hard. Okay, so as you can see, I could just keep going through and just doing more and more of this, right? And I can just go ahead and tweak some of these sounds. Maybe I don't want this to go as low. I don't want this to go as high. And let's just go ahead, because I'm getting a sound that's kind of like freaking out, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about using some uh, of these other devices to kind of control sounds, okay? So as we're doing operator sound design, I really like to use... Um, there's a couple tools I really like to use. One of them I like to use is glue compressor a lot, okay? So something you can do with glue compressor is you can turn on this soft clip section right here, and basically anything that goes up to zero will just get totally chopped off, okay? So if, if it ever gets that hot. So let's go ahead and just, just to show you, I'm gonna turn down the, the volume of the track, right? So it's real low, but I'm gonna boost this. Now notice that that because I have soft clip and, and this would normally be clipping, it would be going above zero. This is, I should also say that at this point, this, wherever I set this is quote unquote zero, okay? Even though this is zero here, when I'm moving this down, this is a macro control over the final output of this track, right? So as I turn this down, anywhere I set this is essentially the track's uh, zero point, right? If I turn up the, the makeup gain to this level, it'll just clip out eventually, right? So, so this is a really good thing to put at the end of a signal chain when you're when you're doing a lot of sound design, right? It just it just it just helps you out. So the next thing I can do is I can pull the threshold down. And now I can I can kind of control this sound a little bit, the dynamics of moving it around, right? Okay, so, you know, the, the final thing that I would probably add to a voice like this is a multiband dynamic. So I want to show you this real quick. Um, a lot of people, they, they instantly bust out this preset known as OTT. They don't know what it does, they just think it makes their music sound better. But let's just go ahead and learn a little bit about multi multi-band dynamics. If I'm just playing I'm just watching what 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 multi-band dynamics does is it splits the signal into three bands and then it, you can compress or expand each one of those bands separately, right? What you can do is this is the compression coming at the this is this is addressing the peaks of the audio, right? So if I pass this little guy right here, this area, if I pass this, then I can do something to the audio. This is essentially setting a threshold, right? Okay, so let's go to this section. This is the <clears throat> this is the above threshold and ratio. So whenever we cross this line, that's what A has to deal with, right? So there's a lot of mid-range in here and it's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, increase the ratio to about three, you know, uh, four to one, right? So at four to one, watch what happens. Now you can see what, what's occurred is that this is the peak of the audio of the incoming signal. And this is now where the incoming signal is hanging out, this, this area right here. It's pushing it down and it's showing me live how much it's pushing it down, right? Negative 17. So I'm gonna recompensate a little bit of makeup gain here, but I'm not gonna add all of it back in. So listen, I'm gonna A-B this now. So without it, we've got kind of too much of that mid-range now with this. And now it still kind of sounds muddy to me. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the low end, right? So I'm gonna increase the ratio. Yeah, let's go up to four. And we're taking 13 decibels out. You can see it right there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that back in. And now another thing that I can do is I can also I can I can also add some highs back in, right? So what I can do is 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 I'm going to compress this, but I want the highs to have less dynamics. I want them to be more present. So what I'll what I'll actually do is I'll increase the ratio. And it looks like when it's really ripping, we we are taking out 10 decibels. So I'm going to actually add 10 decibels back in and check this out. Now we've got a more filterable sound, right?
And another thing I can do is I can add an expander. So on this side, that's what this part deals with. So when I click on B, what I can do is I can now decrease the ratio. And so whenever it's under here, it's actually going to raise the highs. Okay, so now the highs are present almost all the time. And that's essentially what this OTT plugin uh, section is doing. It's also got some fancy settings on the attack and release. And also you can deal with this, remember uh, in, in Operator how you have, your time, you have a time knob? You can also set the time here. And what this is doing is it's shortening or lengthening the attack and release times. So if you increase this, you could probably get maybe just a little bit more of a natural sound, right, if you if you increase this. Now, the other rad thing about multiband dynamics is that you have an amount control, okay? At zero, essentially, this should just should sound like what it sounds like without multiband dynamics even on, right? Essentially, there's no compression. And then when you turn it up, you get... Now, listen to that. We've really got this, like, now that we just... The idea is that now that we've just kind of screwed everything up with these LFOs, we've brought it back to a homogenous center with multiband dynamics, right? And now this sound is, it, it, it's primed for filtering, okay? <laughs> we've got a lot of high-end content and now we can, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do, no matter what kind of filtering we're trying to do, we're, we've got enough harmonic content in there to really mess with it, right? Okay, so that's using more LFOs and using multiband dynamics there. Let's move on into this next section, and this is what I feel like is kind of an unexplored area, and I find it curious. I mean, we've really focused on very specific styles of synthesis um, in the digital world, but we haven't really focused on wave shaping, and I think wave shaping is really cool. Um, let's go ahead and listen to what this sounds like without the processing, okay? And we've got... That's, that's the operator voice that we're working with. And let's go ahead and turn on the wave shaper and let's just listen to what this does, okay? Whoa, <laughs> pretty rad, right? So what wave shaping can do, wave shaping is awesome. Wave shaping is a really cool way to make new tones, especially out of sounds that are, aren't very bright and don't have that many harmonics in them. Um, and I really think that this is a this is a really awesome frontier. What I have going on here is just a LFO, um, a multiband dynamics, of course, which you already saw in the last uh, section, and a saturator, uh, which which has this is where the wave shaper is found, and it's the last algorithm in saturator, right? So the the end result you get is. <laughs> It's just, it's really, it's a powerful sound, okay? So let's just go ahead and, and, and make, uh, let's, let's do the wave shape from scratch, okay? And we're just using a sine waveform. That's all that we've got, just a sine, right? I'm gonna grab a saturate, I'm gonna pop it into this back, and I'm gonna choose the wave shaper, okay? So in order to see some of the controls I need to do proper wave shaping, I have to unfold the device. So I have to hit this guy, right? And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I am I am saturating, that I'm, I'm hitting this threshold, right? So I need to turn down volume and turn up drive. Okay, so now let's, we're almost there. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more. So now we're crossing the line, but notice, hey, there's no, there's, there's no clipping. What's going on? Well, we, what we need to do is we need to actually start wave shaping. We need to change the curve. We need to add, basically we need to add harmonics. That's what we're doing here. So when I open curve up, How cool is that? You get this like... Isn't that fun? You get this really awesome way to dynamically add harmonics to this original signal, okay? And not only that, you get these really cool other controls too. You've got... So you've also got a way to add depth. It adds a sine waveform that's kind of lower, and it, it this, is, this is how much of it is being added to the original sound, so... Really what this is doing is it feels like it's adding like a, a little bit of fundamental back into this really wildly curved sound, right? So without it, let's play it lower. 
I really think that I like the sound of, of, of wave shaping with like bass sounds and lower sounds. So hear that, that tone coming in. Oh, it's just so powerful. It's got so much meat to it, right? So, so the next control is this linear control. And, and basically what it does is it, it works with these other controls to kind of make it so that the curve is, is affecting more or less of the fundamental, right? So now we've got less low end and now we've got more. Okay. And here's where the fun is. I really like period. So moving period around. It determines the number of ripples in the in the depth control, right? So the depth control, remember this is adding kind of a sine waveform and this is adding partials to it. Isn't that wild? Okay. So you might be like, well, that's kind of a wacky sound, man. Like, yeah, I mean... This is what we want. What we want is we want to really flex a waveform to its extremes. And another way to get a lot of extremes is to turn on soft clipping. So remember there was soft clipping in glue compressor. Well, there's also a soft clip circuit. Uh, it's not really a circuit, but there's a soft clip algorithm in Saturator. And when I turn this on, it adds an instance of the analog clip to this output stage. Okay, so we're going to get more harmonics. Check it out. Right? That's with it. Without it. So maybe that's what you're going for, maybe it's not. But what this is going to do is it's going to give us some more harmonics. Okay, so what I want to do is I now want to, I want to affect period over time. And maybe one of the first things that you might think of is, is going for an LFO. Maybe that could be cool. But let's also look at something else. What we're going to look at now is envelope. So envelope is just like LFO, you can map this free envelope to any parameter that you've got going on and it listens to the incoming note on the track to determine its stages, right? So let's go ahead and map this to the period, right? So now, <laughs> well, it's kind of wacky. So, so now we have a attack, sustain, decay, and release sound. We don't need to worry about release because this is just a, the note ends pretty quick. But now we've got minimum and maximum settings just like um, LFO, and we can kind of dial this back a little bit and maybe get more of a usable. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Um, so, so as you can see, how, how awesome is this? And it has its own amount, just like LFO has depth, amount is right here. So without it... So yeah, a lot of unexplored territory with wave shaping. Really get into this. This this could be this could do a lot for you. So I actually want to listen to what this sounds like without soft clip on. And as you can hear, kind of on that top end, there's a little bit of uh, what sounds like a, a kind of like a digital aliasing situation going on. So I'm going to add an auto filter and pull some of that out. Okay. And you might be like, well, we've taken a lot of that top end out. But remember, the idea is that when you're building an effects chain, you know, if I've lost top end, I have all these creative options for adding top end back in, right? So let's go ahead and bust out another um, effect that I want to show you that's really useful. This is erosion. So what erosion can do is it can add noise back in some top end, or I mean, really any, any area, um, a like higher than the subs, it can add some noise back into a... Uh, perhaps a sound that you feel like has lost too much trouble because of processing, right? So that's before it. Let's go ahead and add some of this sign. Woo, there it is. Now we've added a new character back in. How cool is that? And you have three different algorithms to choose from. This wide noise is the one I use the most. Okay, so now let's listen to this. I'm going to group these two together. Holding shift, right clicking, hitting group, and let's listen to the difference. So how cool is that? I mean, it really just, you know, that's that's getting closer to a completed sound. Obviously, this isn't a completed sound, but, you know, I mean, I, this lesson could go on for 100 years if we wanted it to, right? But I'm just kind of showing you some of the, 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 the ideas uh, present in, in sound design, right? Okay. 
So let's move on to something really exciting. What I've got going on here is this is just an operator track. Okay, so that's just a that's just a really nice, cool sounding operator patch by itself, right? Just operator. Okay. So what I've done here is I've actually added a noise layer inside of an instrument rack. So what I did is I I, I made an operator, I grouped it, which turns it into an instrument rack, and then I added a, an instance of simpler. And what is in simpler? Well, there's this uh, repeating noise sound. Check it out. When I unsolo this, listen to them together. This is what the noise uh, sounds like itself. So what this is actually is a noise from a sample pack that uh, I and my friend released recently known as the Forest Collection. And this is just a, a texture of us probably waving a, a, a stick around. If you're interested in uh, getting a really nice, big, fat sample pack of really fun like nature sounds, you can go ahead and check out this link up here. And that's where you can get that if you want that. So having samples and adding them to sound design is a great way to get really original sounds going because you can have samples interact with operator in really interesting ways and in this case i'm using it as a as just a layer so this is a noise layer this is a noise layer over top of operator right so when i play them together and kind of in the bass region i get right so now they might sound a little disjointed so what i did is i added a saturator to get them to kind of fuse together, right? It's a lot of distortion, right? What it's doing is it's kind of it's put it, it's pushing those sounds together. And I also added a notch filter in that kind of mid-range frequency that's that's kind of overpowering. So check this out. How cool is that? So when, you know, someone says, ooh, uh, I want to make a dirty bass. Well, this is a great way to do that. You know, I've, I'm physically adding a dirty sound, okay? And I'm blending it back in with saturator and filtering it down a little bit to make it a sound that I want. So this is without the texture. And here's with adding that, that little uh, looping noise. That we're just going to go ahead and do it from scratch so that you... Uh, can 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 make this happen by yourself. So I'm gonna grab an operator, okay? Add a little bit of harmonics to this. And remember, when we're making like a bass or a lead, you know, we're gonna turn on the glide time, and I'm gonna make this just one voice, okay? So there's here's our there's our bass sound, right? Right click on the top, group it, show hide chain list. Now, this is where we can start to add other sounds, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a chain. So this is a new chain, I can add anything in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a simpler, okay? And I'm gonna go to that uh, forest collection <laughs> that, that we made, this thing is so fun. And I'm gonna find a texture that I wanna use. Okay, so here's a bunch of rustling sticks. Let's just go ahead and listen to this by itself. That's what that sound is, okay? Whoops, I'm on the wrong page, sorry. That's what that sound is. What I need to do is I need to make it so that if I sustain a note, this needs to loop. So what I'll do is I'll turn on loop. And another thing that I need to do is I need to fade the edges just a little bit and change the start just a little bit. So now I have this smooth loop, right? Maybe I'll make it just a little longer, why not? Okay, so now I've got that sound. Now I've got operator with this voice. <laughs> And what I've noticed is that when I'm playing in the range that I actually want to play in, the texture is kind of a little bit too low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to MIDI effects and I'm going to grab a pitch plugin. And here's the rad thing about instrument racks. You can just add anything you want. This is essentially a new track in some ways, right? So I'm going to add this to texture and it's going to place itself before texture. Now what I can do is I can say, okay, we're going to add... 12 steps to this, okay? So now this is going to, when I play lower, texture is still gonna play in, in the range that I want it, right? You feel me? How nice is that? Okay, so now these sounds, they sound good. And the cool thing is that the uh, the texture is kind of moving around with with the low end of, of, this, of this operator, but 
it's not enough. It's not being fused together. So what I did last time is I used a saturator. Instead of using a saturator, let's just try something else. Let's use a vinyl distortion because I want this to be like a big and wide sound, right? So I'm going to move this till I find something I like. Now that's a huge sound right there. So that's really uh, loud and it's clipping out. So let's go ahead and add a glue compressor, remember, and then turn on the, the soft saturator and then the... Now we can turn this down a little bit. And we're gonna clamp down on this with the threshold and use some makeup gain. And here's the fun thing. I, I, something that I haven't shown yet is that if you get a big bunch of effects kind of messing with um, an operator patch and then you go back into operator later and start messing with it, that's when you really start to get some, just a very small change in operator can make huge changes later. So So as you can see, this is a great way to make basses that have more action on, in the top end. All right, so that's adding a, a noise sound to operator and having basically a sampler and operator work together. Okay, so now let's take a look at vocoding. Vocoder is just such an awesome tool. It's, I really think it's, it might be one of my favorite things to use in Ableton. It really helps. It just gives you a lot of control over stuff. So let's go ahead and, and check out what we got going on here. I have this incredibly awesome voice. There's just so much going on here. Okay, so this is a really fun voice. This is operator. This is what the operator patch sounds like. Really kind of dirty patch. We're using... Uh, sign four, the four bit sign kind of thing. Listen to the difference without sign four bit. It just really adds a lot of really crappy digital top end that's really fun to work with. Um, and then there's the second track. Check this out. Well, that sounds pretty weird, right? This is a really fun layer. I'm using vocoder and I'm using operator to vocode a sample. What does the sample sound like? Well, it sounds like this. <laughs> it's just a uh, uh, vocal coach saying Muh. and it, it kind of plays back and forth and what i'm using is then vocoder to have operator kind of mess with that and then i turn both these both of these on and so essentially i've got kind of like a you can think of it as like a dry wet control um where i can blend i can mix these two sounds together so and i've made yet another sound that's ripe for effect processing, right? Now we can go in with, uh, you know, filters and all kinds of other stuff. But instead of doing all that, let's just go ahead and build something like this from scratch, okay? So I'm gonna get out an operator. So in this case, I wanna build a voice that's got a lot of top end harmonics in it. So I'm gonna use a, well, I'll use a four bit sign. I'll use a, a little bit of noise. Now I'll do a saw, and then I'll use this one as noise. I'm gonna choose an algorithm. Okay, so that's a lot of noise. That's actually something that we want when we're working with a vocoder. A lot of, just a lot of uh, top end harmonics, right? Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is obviously right click on the on the bar, choose group. Okay. Now in the next section, I want to find, I want to put a sample in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab that sample, Muh. right? <laughs> if I drag and drop that in here, something that's really rad is you instantly get a simpler, right? So let's just listen. So now, what I don't want to have happen is I want this actually to play at the same pitch all the time. This sample, I'd like the vocal to be exactly the same every time I play it because I don't want the note to change. I want operator to change the note when we're using a vocoder. So what I can do is I can actually right click in here on the top bar, and this is this is a little Ableton secret, uh, simpler to sampler. If I click on this, what'll happen is 
it will load the sample now up in sampler instead of simpler. And sampler is like a beefed up simpler. It's got a lot more options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, now if I play this with the scale all the way up, when I play up the keyboard, it's going to go up in pitch. But if I make this zero, now I get, doesn't matter where I play, it's the same sound. I, I also have to turn off the filter too, because that might have some key mapping on it. So now we've got, so let's just kind of put this in a in a in a section where it's nah. looping the way we want it to. So now in sustain mode, I'm going to turn it on loop. So now it's going to go. In fact, <laughs> so now we've got um, this kind of looping. And the next thing we need to do is we need to put the vocoder. We need to put the vocoder on that part of the chain. So the ma part, right? And the next thing we need to do is we need to choose what the carrier is. The carrier is the 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 thing that's determining the notes, okay? So external, and now we get this drop-down menu, right? And now we can choose vocoding is the track that this is in, and I can choose the operator. Okay? So now So that might be the kind of vocoding sound you're used to hearing, right? But there's some controls here that are really fun. So, you know, uh, one thing you can do is you can reduce the bands and kind of treat this like it was a, that it's, it's kind of like an EQ, right? I scoop the mids a little bit to get, you know, more of a high tech sound. Another thing you can do is you can increase or decrease the range of this. So this is the top and the bottom. There we go. Now we've got some some fuzzy things. And now as as I move formant around, this is kind of a this is kind of a fun control to, to, to tonal sculpt. And then what the, the final control I'm gonna show you is depth. So what depth will do is it will impart less or more of the m sound over top of the operator sound. So I'm actually gonna turn this up just a little bit. So I kind of like where I've got this set. So the final step, now that I've got this kind of noise layer, is to turn the operator back on, turn this ma thing all the way down, and just reintroduce it. Oh, and just listen to that ridiculous phasing we have going on. When I hear phasing like that, I, you know, I instantly just start thinking about using um, a notch filter. You can get a lot of, right? You get that kind of like airplane kind of jet kind of sound. All right, I'm going to fly through this. So I skipped ahead and I added an auto filter and some multiband. And now, again, now that I've got all these effects kind of going on here, any changes that I make earlier in the chain will be, a, you know, a big deal. So I can go ahead and maybe filter this down a little bit. Maybe add some shaper. See? So much fun. Okay. So let's move on to something else entirely. This is now using operator to trigger a delay. Okay? This is a totally different way to use this. What, what now is happening is I've got just a, a really quick, sharp kind of sound. Okay? I'm going to turn these off so we can really hear what's going on. So now, what, what this first operator is doing is just, all it's making is a click sound. What I did is I dragged a simple delay in here, and you can, I mean, just uh, the new delay, like anything that you can use, all you need to do is just turn the time down way low. So we've got... It doesn't matter what I do, this little click sound, all this is just a little click sound. When I play it into this delay, if I turn the feedback up and the time way down, I get this... This is a, a type of synthesis known as car plus strong. It's just taking a delay, and the delay is happening so fast that it's making a note. It's at audio rate, right? So the next thing I did is I added an auto filter. You know, another thing I could do is to make the stereo is I could unlink these channels and make these really close. So maybe this is, you know, 33, 32.1 or something, and now we get... It's a pretty sweet sound. 
Oh. Might be a little far from the other one, maybe 32.8 or something. Right. So the next thing I was like, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's put an OTT in there to really just kind of crank this up. Now I really like that, but what I want to show you is this next thing that I did. What I did is I, 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 I didn't want the sound. I wanted to play it rhythmically. I wanted it to stop when I lifted my finger up off the key. So how can I, how could I, how could I make something like that happen? Let's say you're in the middle of a sound design session and the sound's just lasting kind of too long. Well, this gate here can be side chained. Okay. So what I did is I opened the gate up and I turned on side chain and I, I started another operator. Okay. Let's just go ahead and listen to this up. I got to turn it down. It's super. It's just a fixed frequency uh, square wave, right? All right, well, what's the point of that, Anthony? Well, let me show you. So what I did is I, I this is now off, okay? I just turned the speaker off. I don't want to listen to it. What I want to do is I want to trigger the gate with it, okay? And that way I can have the gate close down on whatever it's, it's, uh, it's listening to by using the side chain. So I open the side chain, choose... Um, this, not using operator as the fundamental. Yes. I choose this operator, right? Um, in this area. So not the first operator, the second one, right? Operator two, right? That's the one that's just making that big, uh, square wave sound, right? And as you can see, now when I play this, now when I lift my hand up, I can see that there's more decay to the sound, but it stops. All I have to do is set this threshold. If I, if I set it too low. It's going to last too long, right? So I just got to set it right up there at the top. And, you know, I don't know what note this is because I'm just using uh, this delay time to make this note. But, you know, all you have to do is listen to your song and kind of tune it to your song. If you go down in a millisecond size, you actually go up in pitch and, the, and vice versa the other way. But now, you know, I could... I can play that rhythmically and that could be a new element. So, of course, I put a saturator at the end. So I get... Okay, so the final thing I want to show you is something that's really fun, okay? Um, this is using operator. So this is what the operator's patch sounds like. So that sounds pretty cool, right? But what I've done is I've actually dropped a corpus. Corpus is a really cool... Um, it's basically the resonant section of the device known as collision. And you can choose different uh, materials and resonant materials to run... Uh, sounds through. So the processing, when it's all said and done, sounds like this. And what's rad about this is you can make like, you can just make the coolest like natural kind of sounds. I mean, a lot of people just end up using corpus for just, uh, you know, drum sounds. But the, the rad thing about it is that you can change the uh, pitch that... See these incoming notes? You can actually change the pitch by side chaining. So we're going to build this from scratch, all right? And I'm just going to choose a triangle waveform. There's not that much going on with it. It's just kind of, you know, it is what it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to audio effects. We're going to grab a corpus, okay? Now, right now when I play this... It's not, it's not really doing much for us. The The corpus is staying on the same note. So the, how do you do this? Well, so how do you do this is you need to open corpus up, okay? And then you've got this, you've got this, oh, side chain. Oh, wow, you can you can feed it MIDI. So I can just choose um, eight operator. And now I can, now it's going to listen to the incoming MIDI data. And then you can tell it what to do with it. So what I can do is I can turn on frequency. And now the same sound we've got... Okay, so now you can hear what's going on. What, I'm, what I want to show you, though, is that what operator needs to do is operator needs to make kind of like a brighter sound in order to, to make this work because this material, I mean, really any of these materials, you can get some cool like stereo effects going on. And maybe this would sound cool to distort, you know, and then filter, of course, you know. But what you really want to do when you're working with these resonant materials is you kind of want to what's known as strike them, okay? So what I need to do is I need to go back into operator, right? And I need to make this kind of more of a... Let's turn corpus off so we can just listen to operator. <laughs> so that's our, like, you know, Casio keyboard kind of sound coming out of operator, right? But when I turn on corpus, now that I've got this bright sound... 
check it out. So at this point, yet again, the world is your hamster. Choose all these different resonant frequencies and kind of mess around with them, you know? What I'd like to do actually is make this just stop quickly. What I'm going to say in, in this case is that there are really, what I'm going to say in this case is that there are a lot of sounds that you might have heard on records and be like, how on earth does somebody make that? I think that using corpus and messing around with some of these uh, materials, you'll find that a lot of the sounds you didn't know how to make before are made be, instead of in a standard synthesis way, they're made uh, in this way you, uh, with with what's known as uh, physical modeling style of synthesis, okay? So this is a really powerful combination using operator to trigger corpus, right? Okay, so, you know, before I was saying we were, we were going to design a voice, we might as well go ahead and use this as the voice that we're going to design, okay? I'm going to create a operator-driven uh, instrument rack uh, completely out of just starting out with this voice, okay? And I'm going to show you kind of what I mean when I'm doing some of the things that I do. Okay, so when I listen to this sound, it kind of still, to me, sounds a little basic, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to group this, okay? And now what that means is that this first, any of these, well, let's go ahead and do it this way. I'm going to uh, hold shifts, select both of these tracks, right click, and group them, okay? What does that do? It creates a chain, okay? What I've noticed about this... I like this voice, but I kind of just like the top end of it. I like the, the brighter part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab an auto filter and drag it to the end of this chain. Okay? Turn it on high pass mode and listen. Right? So now I've got this kind of high pass sound. All right. So now in this device chain, I'm going to add another operator because I want to make the sub with something else. Now I've got a, a sub section that I need to open some release a little bit. And I'm gonna do my classic bass thing. I'm gonna turn the, the glide time down. I'm gonna make this one voice. Right, now the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add some harmonics. Maybe. So now I've got these two different sounds going on. I've got this kind of like, sub and I've got this other sound. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remember I'm going to I'm going to add a noise layer to this, okay? I'm going to just a little bit of a noise layer. So I I made a chain. I'm going to go to my handy dandy forest collection. I'm going to drop that into this chain and because I'm dropping it into a chain, it's going to make a simpler, right? So I'm just going to loop a section of this. I'm going to find the section that I want. So I'm going to listen to just this. Okay, and I'm going to loop that, fade it a little bit. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to up the pitch a little bit. Maybe we're going to up the pitch a lot a bit. Yeah, so we can get kind of like a... Alright, so that's our weird uh, layer on top. So now I've got this... Where are you going with this, Anthony? Well, check this out. So now that I've got all three of these sounds, these are these sounds sound cool by themselves. Like, you know, bass is cool. That rad corpus kind of layer, and then this noise. What we need to do is now we need to fuse them together. And there are so many different ways to do this. Um, you know, one, one thing that, that I think is a pretty great thing to do is a little bit of saturator. Okay, so we're going to compensate... So that's one way to do it. Let's go ahead and look at the else. Let's go ahead and grab, let's grab amp. So amp is fun because it's, it's just another form of saturation, okay? But it's kind of like dedicated to like different, you know, styles of guitar amps, okay? This, it doesn't matter. You're like, well, why would you use a guitar amp on a synthesizer? Y'all, this is, this is the, the, the center of trying to think outside of the box when it comes to creating sound. So, ooh, that's crazy. So now we've got this really ratchety kind of, 
Oh, that is wily, okay? So let's do a little bit of mixing. Okay, maybe a little bit of dry wet. Okay, so now I've got this really crazy, just wacky sound. So this is a great time to now what? Filter. Okay, so now I can add a, a low pass filter. And maybe I kind of just want it to go what? Maybe that's kind of what I want to do. So how would I do that? Well, I would grab an envelope. So now I've grabbed an envelope. I'm going to go ahead and map that to the filter frequency. But I need to make this an inverse relationship. So I'm going to soften some of these attacks. Right, okay, so now I've got this filtered sound. I'm just going to add a quick and dirty uh, OTT setting. This is a great way to kind of fuse some of these frequencies down. And you know, just grabbing OTT and dropping it down there is is not the the, the move. You kind of want to uh, mess with it a little bit, right? You need to look at kind of what's going on. You know what I mean? What do you want more of? So in this case, kind of what I want a little bit more of is this top end, right? So I'm going to actually change these settings a little bit. So minus 15. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Right? Now that sounds kind of cool. I mess around with time a little bit. Maybe a little more mid-range. Okay. And at this point, now that I've added this, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a... At the very end of the chain, I'm going to put a glue compressor in there to, uh, you know, just ensure... I'm going to turn on the soft clipping just to ensure that we don't hit the top. And now I'm going to add another auto filter on the top of this to get some of the very high end out of there. In fact, let's go ahead and use an EQ8. You know, now I'm just going to do a little bit of sculpting. Put this glue compressor at the end. Okay, so now what I can do is I can go ahead and just kind of collapse all of this all this stuff down, you know? I don't really need to look at this. I don't really need to look at all these, because now once I've got these set, the idea is that, you know, these things are now out of sight, out of mind, right? As I add effects to this, I can I can just get kind of things just out of, out of my way. Um, and now I've got this. And what I've got now is basically this, this sound that's just totally mine. This sound, does not exist anywhere else in the world. It's totally me. When we talk about, you know, sound design and stuff like that, I think a lot of people uh, 
what they want to see is they want to see how to make exactly a specific sound that they heard. And I really don't think that that is the approach that you should be taking as an artist. I mean, in, in, in general, the moment that you start trying to emulate a sound that you've already heard, you're already 14 steps behind. The people that are making new sounds and, 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 and forging new places just, just totally forget the idea of trying to copy another sound. And instead, your time is going to be much better spent understanding how to do some of these different methods that I'm showing you and, and any other methods, methods that you see, and then really developing your own methods by using um, effects to just their, 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 their total extremes, and then just taking them and changing them and moving them around and, and developing, you know, new sounds. Because when you're, when you're creating music, uh, you know, sound design music, you know, like electronic sound design music, like the, the, the idea is not to sound like what you've already heard. The idea is to sound like something that nobody's heard. And then you can, you can, you can hone that craft. And over time, like that craft is going to get better and better and better. And you're going to develop a sound around yourself. You know, a set, what is the sound design trick that you do that you're bringing to the table that's, that's getting people stoked, you know? So yeah, um, um, that is taking operator out of its original, you know, that's taking operator out of what it is by itself and adding effect chains, you know, grouping them together uh, to, to make more of them using LFOs, wave shaping, all these different tools can really help you take Operator to the next level. And again, using Operator with all the different tools that are available to you, there is no sound that you can't create. There is no radness that you, <laughs> you know, you can make all kinds of stuff. And, and what I want to point out to you is that only in that first effect did we even end up using reverb this whole time. Taking this, you could take these sounds a, a step even further by, you know, you just using a little bit of reverb on top of these sounds, and you're going to make incredible sounds. If you like this episode and this is the kind of thing you want to check out all the time, uh, feel free to subscribe and ring that little bell. So much love, everybody. This was a really fun thing to show you. Um, I can't wait till the next one. Much love, everybody. See ya. Bye.